Hi guys, I'm Darren and in this video we'll be talking about the INAV random config change bug. Now this is something that you may have heard of already. On inavfixedwinggroup.com we have had an article about this since December last year and Lee from Painless360 did a video on it a few weeks ago. But what I wanted to do was just have a quick overview of what the bug is but also the exciting news that you won't have to worry about it in the future. Most people discover this issue when they put their goggles on to go flying and in the OSD system messages they see invalid setting gyro hardware OPF. Now that is one of the settings that does get changed but there are a couple of others that get changed but the change parameters don't come outside of the allowable range so they don't show up in the system messages. They are notably ACC LPF Hertz and heading hold rate limit. So those parameters do get changed as well, but it's all covered in that INAV Fixed Wing Group article. Of course, I'll put a link to the article and Lee's video in the description so you can go check those out if you want. But what I can do is actually demonstrate this bug happening. So let's head into INAV. Okay, so we're in INAV. I've just got my F405 WSE hooked up. And what we're going to do is head into the CLI. Now, to just show that this is all fine, I'm going to use get gyro hardware LPF and we can see that it is set to the default of 256 hertz. That's all good. Now, the way that I can demonstrate this bug happening is by simply clicking disconnect and clicking connect again. Now, what you'll notice is that this basically doesn't do anything. It just sort of sits there and eventually will get a fail to connect. And you can try and reconnect if you want, but the way you have to reconnect is to disconnect the USB and plug it back in again. Once we got our COM port back, we can connect, but you'll notice that this also takes a fair bit of time and this waiting for data will just sit there forever basically. So we have to disconnect again and reconnect. You can see it's come back quickly now, but the damage has already been done. If I go into the CLI and click get gyro hardware LPF, you can see that there's an error. We have value 101, which is out of range. We have our allowed values down here. So what I can also do is show the other failed parameters. So let's do this one here. And you can see that's 102, which it's not come out with an error, but the default value for this is quite, quite different. It's actually 15. So that's quite a way out. And then let's do the get heading hold rate limit. And that's set to 101 when, again, it's within range. So you don't get the error, but by default, that is set to 90. So you can see that the bug has happened. We only get one thing that's actually pulling an error up, but it has changed multiple parameters. So to get back to where we should be, all we need to do is use this script here. So we are just basically setting the values back to what their default settings are. Don't worry about this set stats to off. This is not really related. At, at one point it was for, it was all the extra saving uh, that was taking place now with things like continuous server auto trim and, uh, the, and the stats are something that save all the time, but that's not actually related to this bug. So don't worry about that. You can keep the stats on if you want to use them. But yeah, just copy this here, paste it in the CLI and save. And then you're all good to go. Now, while this is rebooting, just to go over what was causing the error. So what was going on here? Well, you saw that there were two distinct pauses that shouldn't really be there. The first was when we disconnect from CLI, then try to reconnect to get back into configurator. And the second one, after we've unplugged the flight controller and plug it in and try to connect for the first time. Now, the first one, basically we haven't done anything in CLI that requires a save. So all that the configurator does is halt the CLI. It doesn't actually reboot the flight controller. And that was potentially part of the problem. But also uh, there are some invalid settings coming back. The second time when we've plugged back in, there's an issue where the MSP version that gets sent back for some reason is set to 0.0.0, .0, .0 where it should be a 
proper version number such as 2.4.0 which is what iNav is using at the moment so the configurator defaults to MSP version 1 rather than just saying hang on there's a problem here and there was some issues with the applied defaults the data size wasn't what it should have been because obviously we're using a different MSP version and when you look at the decimal versions of the packet that comes back you see the 101 and 102 values that are getting replaced in some of the settings so that explained where it all came from so what's happened to resolve it is there are much more stringent tech checks for the, the length of the MSP packets. And also there's been a, a change made in the firmware itself to, and all these things should stop this happening. However, some products such as SpeedyB, if they've used the code from the configurator, they will need to obviously implement these changes too to make sure that their products are working well and not giving this bug. So to wrap up this video, let's just go over what to look out for until 5.0 comes along, how you can get yourself back up and running, and then we'll call it a day. So the first thing to make sure that you do is have system messages enabled on your OSD screen. If it's not showing anything, it doesn't take up any space, so there's really no excuse not to have system messages on every OSD. At least then you can see that there's a problem. If you see that gyro hardware LPF uh, invalid setting come up you know you've got this problem of course DJI uh, I don't really know what the system messages are like on DJI I know that there is a hack to get something up there but you will not be able to arm so if you find that you can't arm and you've got enough satellites to be able to arm then chances are you could have this bug so it's well worth just plugging in and checking out the uh, status in the CLI right so I've just mess that up again so if I type status so if you type status you don't actually see the problem so what you want to do is just type in get gyro hardware and it will show the error if it's out of range check the CLI and if you've got that problem just run the script to fix it so that's what to look out for and how to fix it you may well be worth just taking a copy of this putting it on your laptop so you you know you've got it there. you can just copy and paste it and you don't have to worry about internet connection or anything like that I don't know if you can change this on SpeedyB I've never used it but if you've got CLI connection on SpeedyB then there's no reason why that shouldn't work to fix it on there either so that's what to look out for I now 5.0 will fix it I'm running it on uh, my little AR wing up there and it's absolutely fine rock solid on that so bear with us a few more months this will all be fixed when the next version comes out thank you for watching the video guys i hope this was helpful fly models like you style them and have fun the weather's getting better